Well, my name is Wilson Ramirez. I'm a ex-gang member, uh, actor, entertainer now. So this white fence neighborhood is where uh, Ernest Roy Ball was from, uh, formerly known as Kilroy. And I uh, did a movie called Kilroy. I played the lead as Kilroy. So I thought it was right to come out here with you and you know share some uh, some interview time and talk about the movie and stuff like that. I mean, it was it was a whole lot of different emotions, you know. But I jumped on it, you know. I definitely was uh, ready for the audition and uh, my first like lead role, you know what I'm saying. And as a, as a character actor, you know what I'm saying. It, it you don't get much lead roles or number one on the on the call sheet. So when you get a chance, jump on it. Kilroy is uh, from White Fence. He was uh, in the '50s, I believe. Uh, you know, got into a lot of mischief, man. From what I know from the research that I guys got into a lot of mischief. Uh, got into uh, juvenile halls real quick. Um, you know, loved the fight. You know, he's an athletic kind of guy, but he chose the uh, chose the ladder. You know, he chose to do uh, to be a salesman. Um, and uh, you know, he got into he, later on. He, he found the uh, prison system. Got into the prison system, and then uh, you know, met up with some uh, some of the guys that. Uh, I guess they, you know, well, not guess, but they did. They formulated the uh, the mafia, and, and uh, you know, and he became a shot caller and spent about 40 years in the pen. He was like, uh, you know, looking at it like a superhero kind of, you know, in, in a way, because, I mean, he's been through a lot. He's been through a lot. I mean, I don't know if some men can actually do what he did or what he was through. And so it's kind of like, you know, kind of surreal in, in a way. But, you know, you have to come down to earth and be like, okay, you know, he's... Normal person, but uh, but it's 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 a uh, you know you want to ask them so many questions, man. You want to ask them like yo, you know, like what's this like? What's that like? What's this like? I mean, you know, I mean, we're off the wall stuff that he might be like, but he's kept himself you know busy with with God's with God, you know. So I commend him, man. I you know, I, I, you know I, I look up to him and and I really respect him and. You know, I, I, I enjoy talking to him, and I, and I don't know if he takes it as a joke, but I, I'll be like, yo, kid, what's up, man? You know, and I give him a lot of lot of respect, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, he's a good dude. So let's talk about how the, the role of playing Kilroy actually landed on your lap. Well, how did this take me to the very beginning? Oh, uh, man, I was going to uh, uh, family groups, like faith groups with the with individuals, brothers, uh, um, different different uh, um, fellowships. And we meet at a, at, a, at a restaurant. I, w I wasn't able to go all the time, but my friend would go faithfully. And uh, he mentioned one time, he goes, man, you look like Kilroy, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, okay, well, who's Kilroy? Because, you know, I was like, you know, Kilroy was always in the cut, you know? And, I, and when I researched him, he was always in the cut. He, everybody else was was out there with it. Uh, and he was more, he, 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 he kept, he was more like, he kept himself at a distance. He was involved, but you know, it, like an untouchable type of dude, you know, like, like a, a smarter individual is how, how I approached it. And uh, so they told me, man, they said, look, man, we got this film we're thinking about doing. We got the green light and we want, we want you to audition. So I was like, okay, cool, we want to meet. So we met at a location and I did the audition. They're like, look, man, it's yours if you want it, man. You, you blew us away and I, was, and I was happy for that. Like I said, it's my first lead role. And I was excited, man. So, you know, that's how, I, that's how it came about and stuff. So how much experience with acting had you had at that time? Uh, when I gave up rapping, uh, 2010, I had to get cleaned up. And 2011, I still wanted to entertain. And so my friends, dude, Technique Car Club in Baldwin Park, shout out to uh, Lenio, uh, Redwood, Seven, and, um, and, and the homies. Um, and they, uh, they told me, uh, that they was doing Sons of Anarchy background. And I was like, yo, let me get on there because, you know, they were using their cars and stuff. So I was like, yeah, come on. So I did a, I did an episode, uh, episode season, nine, season four, episode nine. I was the Galindo cartel. So then uh, they was like, uh, I caught, well, not them, but me, I, I caught the bug. And I said, well, I want to do more than just this. I want to be an actor, you know what I mean? I want to be able to act. So I found the, uh, found in a school in Ontario and uh, after a couple of years there I think about two years there off and on I said you know I gotta if I gotta do something I gotta do it in LA you know because there was only a there was only a certain amount over there everybody's out here you know and I got in touch with a brother named Sonny Ayon he's also an actor and uh, 
I kept my eyes on Richard, Richard Cabral, and it was going to the same school called Anthony Gilardi Acting Studio. And uh, they told me to come on. Not Richard, but Sonny. And then Anthony, I would email him. He's like, come on, just come to class. Come order to class. And I was like, ah, oh, yeah, but I, you know, I want to do this. I got to do this. You know, I, you know, I, I ain't kind of right in the pockets. And like, come down, just come down. And I came down, man, and I got, you know, I got, I got in, I got tuned into uh, what was, what was, uh, what was about to happen, what was about to formulate. So, yeah, so I was like, you know, since 2011 to now, so that's like eight years strong. It's been going ever since. It's been going. It's been building up year by year. So, I'm grateful for that. So I take it that uh, a lot of roles that you probably go out for would be like you know, those street roles, those gangster roles. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel street about role. that? At first, I, at first I was cool, and then and then uh, it, it quickly changed to like I'm better than this. You know, I could do I could do father. I could do I could do a, a, a teacher. I could do a, you know a guidance counselor. I could. But you know, and my agent, my manager would be like, Yo, just take it as it comes. I mean, Danny Trejo has built an excellent resume being a bad guy, and he's a good guy, you know, but he can play the part great. He, he, he has a lot of stuff that he can feed off, you know? Same thing with Emilio Rivera. And so I just took it, I took it like, I, I, I wasn't taking it well. But then I just finally settled in and I said, you know what, it is what it is. When independent movies come or something like, you know, a biopic or something comes up and you can, you can do something different, that's the chances that, that you take. And that's the chance I took with Kilroy and that's the chance that I tell people in, this, in, in TV, they're gonna, make, they're gonna make you, you know, thug one, thug three, whatever. But <laughs> when, you, when, you, when you get an independent role and guys know that you can, you, you can stretch farther with your skills, then take those roles, you know? And be that father, be that nerd, or be that teacher. And, and, and you'll show them, because you'll get an acting reel, you'll get a reel, you know, and you'll be able to show them that you have more, more to it. And it takes a minute, man, you know, they're going to see you as what you are, you know, what, they, what you look like. I hit Emilio up on Facebook, I was scared to hit him up, and this was before I hit my homeboys up on, uh, from, from Techniques, and I was like, I hit him up, I go, hey man, I want to be an actor, and he was like, you want to be an actor? And I was like, yeah, he goes, go to school. I was like, well, what school? He goes, go to school with no Mexicans or that. I go, wow, there's Mexicans everywhere. You know, he's like, go to Glendale. I went to Glendale College, you know? And there was nothing but Armenians and stuff. And I was like, oh. And he goes, go someplace, no one do, you stand out. You know, that's basically what he was telling me, stand out. And I was like, all right, I'll stand out. But I was like, hey, you know, how am I gonna do that? So I just took it one day at a time, talked to him here and there, actually met him on Sons of Anarchy. And then I was like, okay, and I took it to, uh, AGIS, Anthony Gilardi Acting Studio, and went from there, man. And I met some great people there, so. Everything is because of God, whether you believe it or not, you know, the higher power is there. And once you grab hold of that and you're directed in the right direction, you're going that direction, he fulfills your dreams, man, he does. Well, I came out from, uh, from uh, the East Coast. I came out here uh, 19, 20 years old, exactly on January 1st of uh, 1980, no, 1990, it was 1990. And uh, I hit the ground running, man. Hit the ground running, and uh, met some people in, uh, at a job that I worked at, and they was involved in, uh, you know, with some people, uh, with friends and family in, in the Big Hazard area. Big Hazard's just right over here. And, uh, you know, started on Ricardo Street with the homeboys, and then next thing you know, it went, wound up in the projects, and uh, one thing led to another, man, and we just, you know, started getting into all kinds of stuff. And, that was my big thing, man. I mean, a lot of people went to school for this and for that. When I came to LA, after I saw Colors, I was like, yo, I wanna, you know what I'm saying? I wanna know where this is at. Oh, this is where this is at. And this, this, this hood is here, and wow, this is. So I was, I knew pretty much, I had, knew, I had the map in my head of everything and everybody where everything was. That was just my thing, I don't know. It just, you know, people pick up and, you know, have baseball cards and football cards. And I was just like, look, this hood's here, that hood's there. And, I'm over here now, it's just, you know, so that was just my thing. You know, you, you gotta understand, I, w I, was a, I was a baseball kid, I was a football kid, I was a basketball kid. That's all I did. I mean, it probably, that stuff was happening in my city, or, or, or at least the criminal lifestyle, but I didn't see it, you know what I'm saying? I, I was home, I'd go home, baseball. I guess that was all in my mind, you know, sports. But then, when you see that, and you're like, wow, I ain't gonna go out to LA anyway, don't matter. And then my dad's like, hey, going to LA. And I'm just like, and we're going to LA. So once that happened, man, it just I gravitated to it to the fullest. Ignorance is bliss, you know what I'm saying? You, 
and you you bouncing around and and having a good time and stuff, and then uh, life gets real, and and you know you got to make decisions. You got to make decisions, man. And, uh, shout out to the homeboys and everything. You know it's it gets deep, man. It gets deep, and you really have to know. You got to hold your mud, and, and you got to understand what who are you, what can you do, what can't you do, and you gotta sometimes bow down if you have to, you know. Now, how do you think? They feel that you're an actor now, and you've moved on with yourself, moved on with your life. I think, I think, I think they love it, man. They know they, they see that. I mean, a lot of homeboys have moved on. You know, I got I got homeboys in, in, at, at different corporations, and they're building themselves up. They still are who they are, um, and they don't shy away from what they've been through. They love what 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 they learned, you know, from 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 the neighborhood they were from. But 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 they're living life, man, and they're living. Uh, I got homeboys traveling. They're going to see different, they went to England, they're going to uh, Ireland, they're going to Scotland. You know, people are see, doing things, you know? And, and, and that's, that's the benefit of everything, you know? That's, that's the great thing that we're able to see our, our, our own kind move up in this world, you know what I'm saying? Now, I remember on watching Training Day, uh, they had a Latino gang in there called Hillside Trece, yeah. but it turned out that the lead actor wasn't even Latino. Uh, how do you feel about non-Latinos playing Latino roles. Oh, I know you're talking about. I just think, yeah, I, man, you know, he's a good guy, man, from what I heard. <laughs> yeah. But, but if you have, if you have options, try it. I know people go for, you know, who's better on social media, who has the bigger name and, and stuff like that. And what I would say to those actors, if they do get those auditions, Go in there, man, and and, and and be different, man. Shake up, shake up those casting and directors up, because that's the only way we're going to be able to stand out, you know? And if we don't, let them book the room, like they say, and make sure they remember you for the next one, you know? But, uh, yeah, I mean, hey, man, it's, you know that, hey, he got, a, he, got, he got a great SA accent, you know? I know. <laughs> I mean, so I can't do it. I, I, don't, I sound more Arabic, you know what I'm saying? It, it doesn't come off right, but he sounds good. You know what I'm saying? I give it to him. But point is, man, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of other actors that could do the job just as well, and the Latinos. So pick a Latino, you know? Are there any benefits that social media has for the actor? I mean, I've, uh, I've, had, uh, I've had people tell me that uh, they, they lost a job because uh, they wasn't as popular on uh, Instagram as somebody else. You know, they're not bringing uh, they're not bringing the people to the seats like maybe somebody else might. Or if they're not if they're not sure who they want, and say you're uh, you're pinned, and it's you against Alex. You know, it's like okay, who's then they they go to the Facebook, they go to the Instagram, and yeah, man, it's good to build your social media up. You know what I'm saying? But people sometimes the only thing I disagree with is people do, do some crazy corny stuff, man, just to to get popular. You know, it's cool. But uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna keep it as simple as possible. And if that doesn't give me a lot of followers, then so be it, man, you know? A lot of Instagrammers that are becoming actors because of their popularity and their skits. And sometimes that's a good thing. I mean, you're making your own content and you're showing people what you can do. You're not really waiting for no, no production company, no casting director to tell you that you got it going on and whatever, you, you're doing it yourself. So there's a great thing about that. So uh, give us a little bit of a, a timeline, like when do you expect the movie to come out? Where can people find it, see it, watch we're it? Trying to, we're trying to get it on all platforms, man. Uh, we look, uh, you know, I, I can't speak much, Pete and Paul no more. Um, all I, I, I can say that, you know, we're, we're, we're building a platform. Uh, we have some distribution people in, in, in you know, in, in the sites, and this is from what they've told me. Um, there's a certain thing they're trying to, they're trying to wait for. I spoke to you earlier about, and um, yeah, we're looking at like 2020, early 2020. So, you know, we, we're trying to make it a great film. It's going to take a little long, but in the end, it's going to be, you know, all praises to God and it's going to be a great film. It's going to show the change in a, in a man who everybody thought didn't, couldn't have change. And he thought he was going to die to his sins, you know, and, and now he's, he's reborn again and, and uh, he's, living, he's living a great life and he's, He's serving the Lord, and that's what we want to show. We want to show the change in somebody, and the miracle and the redemption that can be, that can be, that can that can heighten anybody who's struggling with anything. It's great, man. The fact the fact that I got a chance to be in the lead role, and to show my talent, 
is great. That's all you want to do is be able to, to show what you can bring and be able to feed your family with it. That's, that's my goal. Riches and fame and all that, that's beautiful. But if I can feed my family off a job that I really like, because I've had several jobs, <laughs> it's just, you know, jobs is jobs, and, but this is the job that I like. And the fact that um, I'm doing what I love is great. The fact that God still got me, even after all my turmoil and tribulations, is great. The fact that you guys are here, I appreciate you guys, you know. I think Careway is going to be a great movie, man. I hope it's, it's going to impact people. And it's a faith-based movie, so there's there's some violence, but at, at the end of the day, it's 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 to reflect on what was dark and now is light. So. Thanks for watching StreetTV.net. If you're not subscribed, please hit that button below and click the bell to receive alerts and notifications. Feel free to comment below so you can give us your feedback and be sure to watch the two related episodes to the right. If you want to support this platform or follow us on social media, visit the links in the description. And thanks for watching StreetTV.net.